So we've been trying to work on that. Now the internet, for some reason, we've just been having it dropping in and out. Uh, I was so disappointed Wednesday night. God was so real in this place at the altar service. Come to find out it had quit and stopped. And I was deeply disappointed in that because I was hoping the power of God just visit you like it did here. And I pray it did. We just didn't get to finish the message on live stream. So they, they're supposed to be helping us with that. It just tends to be a bigger problem when the weather's not cooperating. So we apologize for that. 
With the issue of closed captions, some of you got words at the bottom. We've been trying to figure out the problem. And what we found out is on your Facebook page, no matter uh, how you're receiving that, there should be some kind of settings where there's three dots. You can mash that or click on that rather and uh, uh, it'll go and you can turn those captions, those words off. Or they say the, the little setting sign, which is like a small tractor wheel. If you uh, click on that as well, it'll lead to that. You can turn those off. So it's not necessarily on our end. It's, it's where, where you're watching. So we just wanted to pass that information so it won't be a distraction to you. The words are not lining up on the screen is what we're saying, and it is a distraction. So just wanted to give you that information this morning. You can go to the settings button, and it may lead you to video settings or something, but you can uh, uh, cut those off. Thank you, Selena and Aaron, for helping us out with that information. And uh, prayer request, if you have a prayer request, we're not having church tonight to the weather. If you have a prayer request, please send those in so we can get those down and pray over those before the message this morning. Let's just have church, brother. Don't lead us in some hymns. Page 277, repeat.
Canaan. I'm not in Egypt any longer. I'm not bound. Thank God last Sunday being Easter, the uh, Passover blood has been applied. The lamb's been slain. I'm not in bondage to sin any longer. Thank God I'm free. And I'm free to worship the Lord Jesus Christ here today. Oh, I appreciate what I feel in my soul in this service already here today. Praise God again. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, send in your prayer requests. Be sure to uh, type those in there so they can get them wrote down. And we can pray over those for the preaching here this morning. Just give you a few announcements here before uh, uh, Brother Doug comes to sing to us this morning. We do appreciate all the comments. We go back and read those and they are an inspiration and encouragement. And uh, thank you for those. And if you that's not, we, we would like for you to, do, uh, to comment because it is encouraging when we read those. And thank God for all the views, but we'd like to know who's watching. And we're not able to see that when we're live streaming, but we do appreciate that so very much. Tithes and offerings. Just a reminder, the drop box at the house, just call us before you come. We'll have that set down on the porch when you come by. Uh, the address on the Facebook, uh, church Facebook page, you can send those directly to Sister Tiffany. We appreciate your giving. It was fine, uh, uh, and, and the board as well. We've been mentioned how I was going to get this, and, but you have been so wonderful, just continuing the giving, uh, keep that report, and look every week, and I uh, just appreciate all the giving. We will not have church tonight due to the weather, Now, there's no way they can go, and there's a lot of uncertainty when this is coming, somewhere between 2 o'clock this afternoon and midnight, that's all they know. But we are in the crosshairs more this Sunday than we were last Sunday. And we know how devastating the tornadoes were last weekend. Want everybody to be safe. Uh, but the internet's the problem. It cuts on and off, especially in the weather and the electricity. And we don't want a reoccurrence of what happened here Wednesday night. I'm telling you, it's just a major disappointment. We don't want that to take place again. So we just want you to be safe and, and, and watch the weather and, and be aware of what's going on, so we will not have church here uh, tonight, but we'll be back Wednesday night, Lord willing, at 7 o'clock. Um, we are hoping to eventually do our parking lot service. We're just depending on the weather. So maybe by next Sunday, things will work out, and we can just all get together in the parking lot. They are allowing us to do that, and so we'll let you know more Wednesday night if that's an available option for us. Uh, we will get you word if we can do that. And again, appreciate all that you're doing. Send in those prayer requests right after this song. We're going to uh, have special prayer for each one. Come on, brother. Don't sing to us. Worship as he sings to us this morning.
There's several unspoken requests. Uh, Sister Stacy Overstreet has one. Cindy Fountain has an unspoken request. And Sister Lena uh, mostly has a, an unspoken request. Darlene Smith's family. Let's remember uh, them. Uh, Brother Greg Chastain is having problems with his knee. And Barry Cohen. Let's remember these needs. These are the ones that were just sent in. So let's bind together. Pray for the needs. And let's pray for the service, the message this morning. Could we? Lord, thank you that we can bind together in one accord in the same spirit right now. We may be all at different locations, but you're the same God and you're everywhere all at the same time. And Lord, we come and ask that you'll touch and meet these needs right now in the name of Jesus. All these requests that's been sent in, all that's been made known aloud, you know each and every one. You know the situations going on in these lives, and these sit the bodies, the, those that's lost a loved one, how to comfort them, our nation in this time of crisis, the weather today, all the unspoken needs as well, all the needs of those that's watching, even those that are watch replay. The needs they have in their lives we bind together right now, calling upon your holy and wonderful name. Lord, that you not only hear our request and know in our hearts you hear our prayer. Lord, that you're going to answer these prayers. And Lord, you're going to uh, send these testimonies and reports our way of how God's touching, working, and moving in hearts and lives. Anointing this preaching of your word this morning. Thank God what you poured into my heart. Thank God the way you prepared me. But oh God for that divine unction of the Holy Ghost to come and preach through me today. What I feel in my heart. Lord more than just the anointing to preach. The anointing that will reach every soul. Those in the sanctuary. Those that are watching them. Those uh, uh, that will watch. You know how to touch and move and minister and meet the need. In an altar somewhere, somebody will find victory in their soul. And we thank you for what you're going to do in your holy and wonderful name this morning. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, I appreciate what I feel in my soul on this Sunday morning. It may uh, look dreary outside and uh, hints of bad weather that... If you look out the window, we look out the door, but right here in the house of God, oh, how we feel the presence of the Lord. How He wants to work and to move in our lives here today. Again, no service tonight due to the weather, but we will be back, Lord willing, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on the live stream. Esther chapter 4, that's right before the book of Job. Esther, the fourth chapter, if you'd like to turn with us today. Praise God, praise God. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Esther, chapter number four. <clears throat> Esther, four and verse four. <coughs> Esther chapter 4 and verse number 4. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told her that was the queen exceedingly grieved. And she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatab, one of the king's chamberlains, who had, uh, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hatak went forth to Mordecai into the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and to charge her that she should 
uh, go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make request before him for her people. And Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Amen. That's the end of the reading this morning. I want to preach of the Lord would just anoint and help us today. You are in the devil's way. You are in the devil's way. Now, just so everybody's up to speed on the, the setting of this chapter, in this book, Esther has become the queen. Ahasuerus uh, has removed Ashtai, the queen, before, looking for this new queen. And now Esther's become the queen because of her God-given beauty. Now, at some point, Esther came to the realization that her beauty was given to her by God so that she could become queen. Too many people today do not recognize who we are and why God made us the way he made us. Now Esther, she could have went on her beauty and been lifted up in pride and now that she's the queen, she could have forgotten all about God, but she didn't. She recognized I'm only the queen because God gave me this beauty to put me in this position. I, I wish somehow, some way, everyone that's been saved, every person that's asked the Lord to forgive them, the blood of Jesus to wash their sins away, to one day recognize why God made us the way He did. We're all uniquely created, but it's all for a reason. God gave you the gifts that you have only so that you can do what He wants in your life. And the devil gets involved in our life lie on the flesh and we begin to live for ourselves. We begin to be lifted up in pride and we think of ourselves differently than we should. But I want to assure all of us, those here and those watching this morning, you are who you are by the grace of God. That's the way Paul said it. We are who we are by the grace of God. And the gifts that God has blessed you with is only so you can do His will. I was in that office this morning. The Holy Ghost was so real in that place. And I got to trying to imagine if every child of God would one day recognize that I'm only who I am because God wants me to be in His will. And if I allow the will of God to be done in my life and all of those that's been saved allow God's will to be done in our lives. It's not enough devils in hell or enough devils in the world to stop the church from having revival. I said there's no way it can be stopped but that's the devil's job. He don't want you to realize you are who you are. Your abilities and the gifts God's blessed you to have is only so God can use you in his will. Yes. Now let's get to Mordecai. Now Mordecai is Esther's first cousin. The Bible describes that she was Mordecai's uncle's daughter. But the Bible says that Esther's mother and father have died and uh, Mordecai, undoubtedly, he's several years older than Esther. He took her in and raised her as his own daughter. Now, Esther's become the queen. God used Mordecai, set it all up so she could be in this position. But I want you to notice something about Mordecai. Mordecai is a known Jew. Esther is not. Even though Esther is a Jew, the people does not uh, around her does not know that she's a Jew. The king doesn't know that she's a Jew. But Mordecai is a known Jew. And because of that, he is left out 
outside the gate of Shushan the palace. Now Esther's inside the palace. She's the queen. But now he's left outside the king's gate as it's so called. Out in what I read to you in the city streets. So he's outside the gate in the city street while Esther is in the palace. Now she's not always just in the king's palace. There's places that she is put from time to time. Nevertheless, she's in that circle of that campus where the king dwells. I want you to understand that Esther has been put in a position so she can fulfill God's purpose for her life. But Mordecai's put outside the gate of the city of the king, out in the street, where he can hear what's going on in the kingdom. God had different ways and different methods to get this message across to Mordecai. And then he would send the word of the message through Hatak and communicate back and forth to Esther. Now I want you to understand, God is sending the word that Esther needs to hear through Mordecai, his servant, outside the gate. Isn't that just like the way God's working today? God knows how to get us the word. God knows how to get the message that we need in our lives. How does he get the word to you and I? It's through his spirit. Now he has different ways and methods to do that. But I can assure you, all those tornado pictures from last Sunday night, all the devastation, but that cross was still standing when the others were th uh, thrown aside. All the different things that we saw. I come to preach to you. I don't care who you are. You may be running from God today, but God knows how to put the word. God knows how to get the message across to us by the power of the Spirit. I will shut the behind. I was so disappointed Wednesday night when I got home. If you were not in this sanctuary, you missed out. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost sat down in this place. And then I got home and realized I didn't even get my last point on live stream and replay. And I, I was so disappointed. But my wife reminded me, God knows how to get the word out. God knows how to get out the most something of the head. God's got a Mordecai in your life. Whoever you are, whatever you're going through, he knows how to get the message to where you are. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now, the third person I want to introduce to you today, this morning is Haman. Oh, wicked Haman. Haman was out to destroy Mordecai. Now, the reason is, Haman is not the king, but he aspires to be the king. He is used by the devil in very wicked ways. Now, Haman has lifted himself up as somebody. He's got an agenda. He's trying to surpass the king so he can be exalted as king. And so he's, he's declaring everybody to bow down when he walks by, but that guy out by the king's gate, Mordecai, will not bow to wicked Haman. That makes Haman so mad that he sets on a pattern to destroy the Jews. He knows Mordecai the Jew. He doesn't realize Esther the queen is a Jew. And so he tricks with subtlety the king to declare a law that all Jews will be slain on a certain day. Now again, he doesn't recognize that Esther's a Jew. He just hates Mordecai. And he's out. But I read to you how God used Mordecai to get word to Queen Esther in the palace. This is why God gave you your beauty. is to put you in a position that at some point you got to stand up and save God's people. Oh yes. Now Haman was out to destroy him because he hated Mordecai. Now I want you to understand what I'm trying to preach to you this morning. In order for Haman to, to fulfill his agenda, in order for him to exalt himself above the king, he's got to get Mordecai out of the way. I come to 
news to you this morning. You are in the devil's way. The devil has a plan. The devil's out to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil's going to raise up that antichrist after the rapture of the church. But before then, he wants everybody to forsake God. He don't want anybody to love the Lord Jesus Christ. He don't want any of us to sell out to God. So you know what he's going to try to do? He's out to destroy the church. Do you know how he destroys the church? It all starts with you. I come to preach this morning. You're in the devil's way. He can't fulfill his plan. He can't exalt himself. He can't destroy the church. Because you are in the devil's way. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here this morning. You are in the devil's way. Why? In order to destroy the church, he's got to start with you. Think about this. If the devil can get you out of the way, that's going to affect your family. Most people don't realize there's one person in every family affects the rest of that family. You know who the devil's going to target? <coughs> that one. He hounds. He strategizes. He schemes a plan of deception. Now he wants everybody. But he targets that one that has the greatest effect. Isn't it true? Yeah. That's the way the devil works. And see, most people the devil target. Now he targets everybody. Please don't misunderstand what I'm trying to get across to you this morning. He targets everybody. But the people that the devil targets the most don't even realize. I mean, think about it. I'm preaching to somebody this morning. Now, it seems like the devil fights you harder than anybody else. It seems like that you struggle more than anybody else. It seems like the devil's there no matter how uh, you get struck. Victory for just a little spell. The devil's right there on you again. You know why? If he can get you, he'll affect your family. And if he can get your family out of the church, then that important cog in the church is now missing. And the church cannot be what she really wants or God wants her to be. Oh, I hope you understand what I'm trying to get across. The devil targets you because you're in the devil's way. He wants to destroy the church. The way he does that is destroy the families in the church. How does he get a hold of the family? He gets a hold of you. He gets a hold of that person. I don't know who all I'm preaching to. I know everybody that I'm preaching to. The devil, he doesn't like you. He despises you just as much or even more than Haman despised Mordecai. Why? You are in the devil's way. Let me show you a little bit about that. Let me hit them the devil ever make you feel like you're useless, unloved, insignificant, overlooked, <coughs> worthless, nobody cares? Think about what I just said. Has the devil ever made you feel insignificant? Useless. Nobody cares. That's his greatest trick. I've heard that so many times. And, and I know immediately who the author of that is. Do you know why? You're in the devil's way. He cannot fulfill his plan until it gets you out of the way. Because you affect the family. The family affects the church. Because let me show you something. If you get to the place you feel like I'm not loved, nobody cares, they don't, I, I'm just worthless, I'm useless, I'm insignificant, all right, then you affect the rest of your family. And then you, the rest of your family, they may come to church, but they, they, they're not involved in the church. Then the church cannot be like it ought to be and it can't be used like God intended. Can I ask you, who's going to reach the lost? If the church is not the overcoming power that God intended all because the devil got you out of the way. How 
How are the sick going to get healed? Come on. How are the bound going to be delivered? Right. How do the struggling ever get victory? How do our kids grow up to be mighty men and women of God? If the church is not what it's supposed to be. Right. How does the devil do that? He gets you. <laughs> he gets you. He gets you. Then you affect your family, which your family affects the church. And see, we don't realize that. We are so involved in ourselves and in our own little lives, we don't realize the effect we have on the whole body and the, the, the effect the body has on the lost and the community around us. That's why you are in the devil. I hope somebody realizes, like Esther did, destroy the Jews and it's all up to me. If I don't take a stand, if I don't step out, if I don't obey God, the devil's going to have his way. The devil's going to get what he wants. I'm oh, trying to encourage somebody. Open your eyes. Let the Spirit speak to you the word God's got for you today because you're in the devil's way. He cannot do what he wants until he gets you out of the way.
He wants to destroy the church by destroying the family. And it all starts with me. I'm not going to let the devil do it. I'm going to shut them up. I'm going to be Esther. Thank God for the Mordecai. The spirit that gets the word, the message to my heart. But I'm going to rise up like Esther. I'm going to take my stand. And I'm going to do God's will to make a difference in somebody's life. Everyone taking that stand. Everyone realizing 